Hey everyone, welcome to the front row with Ed. If you've been to the channel before, you realize that most of my videos are done in the clinic. However, I'm on vacation this week, but the learning never stops. Before I left, a patient of mine gave me a great article on five ways to help reduce chronic inflammation. And I liked it so much, I thought I would share it with everyone. First, we have to talk about the difference between acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation is a great response. It's a healthy response in the body. So for example, you sprain an ankle, you've got some damaged tissue. The tissue in the area that's been injured releases cytokines and that starts the cascade process of inflammation. And all the things that we know, the redness, the swelling, the heat, it's a protective mechanism so that we don't go out and injure ourselves anymore. And then hopefully as the ankle heals, the inflammatory process is reduced and we go back, restore range of motion, restore health and life goes on. Chronic inflammation setting, what happens is we don't ever completely shut off the inflammation process. Chronic inflammation has been linked to diabetes type two, heart disease, neurological disorders. So chronic inflammation is a real huge problem, especially with our stressful lives. So we're gonna talk about five ways in which we can try to reduce the chronic inflammation. The first risk factor for Chronic inflammation is obesity. So if you're overweight, what happens is that the cytokines, which is the inflammatory marker, is actually stored in the fat cells. And if we have a little bit too much fat, especially around the organs, it starts seeping out. And the body recognizes that as an inflammatory process. So it starts all the cascade of inflammatory issues. However, as long as the fat's still there, we still have low levels of irritation, low levels of inflammation. So we have to reduce our body weight, especially if we're obese. Second thing we have to do is increase our omega-3s, and those are found in fatty fish. So unless you're eating fatty fish approximately three times in a week, you need to supplement that with omega-3s. What omega-3s tend to do is help to shut down the inflammatory process. Sometimes the inflammatory process gets started, but then it doesn't stop, and that's the issue. So omega-3s help to reduce the inflammatory process. Third thing we all have to do is exercise. And the reason we want to exercise is not only do we burn body fat, which once again stores the cytokines, but we also release anti-inflammatory agents every time we exercise. Even 20 minutes of brisk walking classifies as exercise enough to help reduce chronic inflammation by releasing anti-inflammatory agents. The fourth thing that we can do is actually stretch an inflamed muscle. A little bit counterintuitive because, especially if you're a patient of mine, I talk about how stretching must always feel good or always feel yummy. In this situation, though, we have a different application for stretching. Say, for example, once again, I sprained my ankle and I have inflamed tissue in the area. There's been some preliminary research that shows that if you stretch, gently of course, if you stretch the inflamed tissue, it helps to release resolvins, and resolvins are anti-inflammatory agents. So the goal when we're stretching inflamed tissue is not to necessarily elongate the tissue, but it's to help release resol resolvins, which helps to then reduce the inflammatory process. Number five is low dose aspirin. But please check with your physician first because there's a lot of implications of taking it. But once again, research studies have shown that low dose of aspirin helps to once again release resolvins, which help to stop that chronic inflammation process. So there you go, you got five important things, easy things that you can work on right here, right now. If you haven't been to the channel, check it out. It's full of exercises, back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, all sorts of stuff. If you have any questions, please leave it down below. And remember, never stop learning.